Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about how microphones hate modes. Well, I think we all kind of hate modes, but microphones in particular because, you know, they, they're really sensitive. They're really better than our ears in a lot of cases. Some of these measurement microphones we use, Brule and Care has a series of capsules that we use. Uh, oh my gosh, the resolution is, is off the scale. I wonder if you could even use those for recording music and voice. Hmm, might be an interesting thing to look at. Room modes. Unwanted sound pressure between two, four, and six surfaces. Sidewall, sidewall, floor, front to rear, floor to ceiling. So we have those three sound fields, remember, in a room. We got this, this, and what's the other one? This, right? Okay. So we curve a room every three feet. We, when we were first doing our research and development uh, back in the 90s, I think we used up to 18 microphones when we measured rooms. And what we found is that most room modes are about three to four feet in distance, physical distance, throughout the room. Now, they can be different strengths, different amplitudes, but their physical dimensions seem to be like that three, four foot mark. So how are you going to get away from that? Everybody's like, well, you want to position your workstation, you want to position your listening position in a place where there's no modes. Well, that's nonsense. They're everywhere. You know, what are you going to chase, chase around the room and look for that one magical spot? No, it's not going to happen, especially when they're that close together. Excessive pressure with modes exaggerate and attenuate. Well, that's the last thing we want our microphones to hear. We want them to hear everything and maybe just a little bit of the room, not definitely a modal problem. We don't want any exaggeration, and we don't want any signal loss. We're, we're trying to capture everything, right? Fundamental and the harmonics. Well, what do the microphones work on? They work on pressure, sound pressure, against the diaphragm. So if we're adding pressure with modes into a room, what are we doing? Okay, yes, we're complementing the way the microphone works, but we have to be careful. We have to manage that pressure because we want resolution too, okay? And we have excess room pressure, that's going to reduce resolution. So we want to be really careful here with that stuff. Drum platforms, or ACDA 10 series. If we reduce the pressure, we get more tone balance. Drummers call me all the time that use our platforms, and they tell me they get so much definition and resolution that they play quieter. Well, that's always welcome, especially with these drummers, right? Especially if you're next door to them. So that's what we get with the platform. Now we have the variable acoustic program, and that's the ACDA series and the carbon panel, okay? Both those units are on wheels and you can move them around. Once again, the drummers always tell me that use these technologies. They move them closer to the drums for a particular tonal quality to match a song they're doing. Or they move them farther away, open it up a little bit. So there's ways that you can control the acoustics in the room by moving products in and out. And then, of course, there's always diffusion, which topic for a whole other discussion. Reflection management is the second issue. We have to be careful with microphones. We do a lot of vocal rooms, these podcast rooms. Sometimes the, the talent likes to stand. Sometimes it likes to sit. Well, if a, a six-foot-tall guy is standing in a seven-foot-tall basement, doing voice, where's the mic? A foot, foot and a half away from the ceiling? This is a problem. So you have to be really careful with reflections. You have to manage those. Rate and level, very critical for, for those. Vocal rooms, RT60 times, there's a good example. When that microphone's close to the ceiling, you hear a lot of reverberation in that microphone, and that's the last thing you want. So. I guess we could say mics hate modes and reflections, but in turn, that's how they work. So we have to give them enough energy to get resolution, but not enough energy to produce distortion. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum 
and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.